originally did a video on how to light green screen and how to set up green screen. And what I want to talk about today is actually how to do the, pro the chroma king, which is like removing the green and replacing it with any kind of background. In particular, what I like to call the mirror technique. Uh, the mirror technique's really cool. You basically shoot yourself twice and different angles, blend it together. You'll see what I mean. It's actually a really cool technique. There's lots of different ways you can use it. Um, so yeah, stay tuned, watch the video. Hopefully you get something out of it. Tell me what you think. Okay, so here we go. I've just brought in my footage into Final Cut and it's basically me standing in front of a green screen um, in two different directions. Uh, one, so basically I'm facing that direction and then I get some footage of myself facing that direction and you can probably already see what I'm going to do. I'm going to put those together, me like that and me like that. So the first thing we'll need to do is press B for the blade tool and we're going to cut somewhere right after the first uh, just where I take off the glasses basically. So probably about just here somewhere. Now the idea of this is we're going to create a mirror reflection so which of course means it's going to be laterally inverted. So if I use my right hand to take off these glasses when I turn around and I face the other way I'm going to need to t use my left hand uh, my left hand to take off the glasses so that it, it matches and it's it's inverted and it looks like a reflection. So I'm going to just make another cut um, about here somewhere. I'm going to get rid of all of this in between just by pressing delete on that. So now we've got two bits of footage, uh, me facing both directions. I'll just shorten that clip. Only needs to be a few seconds long. Um, I think four seconds is good. Might just uh, go in and change the duration manually of this one to four seconds as well and just zoom in a bit. I like to use command plus to zoom in, command minus to zoom out. That gives us a bit of a better look at our footage. I'm just going to pull any audio out as well. Okay, so I'm going to press T for trim because I just need to slide this along a little bit and find the moment where I'm facing towards the right of screen uh, and I'm standing still and I remove the glasses. So it's just me checking to make sure my position was right on the monitor and probably about here somewhere. So standing still, reaching up, taking the glasses off and then just kind of looking out, looking straight ahead, looking all serious. There we go. And Boom. So we're going to have to do that for the other direction as well. Now he takes the glasses off a little too early in this one, so we're just going to trim that one back a bit. We can fix up the timing of that in a minute, so don't worry too much about it if it's not exactly right, because we've got heaps of time to like fix that up in just a sec. What I'd suggest we do now is just go over here and open up your effects, go down to um, keying, and we're just going to... This is really the principle of keying. Now, some programs like Adobe After Effects probably give you a lot more control um, over your keying, but I, I can usually get a pretty good key here in Final Cut or in Premiere as long as your keying was done right in the first place. As in, if your green screen was set up properly, your lighting was good, you're going to get a really good natural separation from the background. As you can tell, there's a real contrast between me and this green, so I'll just drop it on and basically it's almost pretty good. Um, just to begin with, just in its own, you know? It's almost um, good like that. Now, as you can see, just around the top here, there's a, we can still see a little bit of above the green area. So one thing you can do um, with that is just go down to um, crop top and just bring that down a little bit. As you can see, it's just, I'm just cropping that little bit out there. Whoops, not too far. I'll chop off the top of my head. Just want it right there. Okay, and while we're at it, I'm gonna drag the keying effect onto the other clip as well and oops that didn't quite work let's just try that again there we go if it doesn't work you can always command z or control z and go back again we're just gonna have to crop that top bit out there there we go pretty good key Usually there's a lot more work involved in keying. One thing you might want to do is just go up here to view and this middle one here is your matte view. Now the white is what's going to remain and the black area represents everything that's going to be gone. It'll essentially just be transparent. 
So any layer you have underneath that is going to show through that transparent area. So, but that's, that's a pretty good key. Sometimes you might have to just go through and adjust some of these parameters, fill the holes a little bit. Sometimes you might have to want to go through into your mat tools and just, um, sometimes it helps if you, you know, if you might want to just get rid of a bit of the edge, shrink and expand is handy. There's, there's a lot of tools here that can help you improve the key if it's not quite right to begin with. So if it looks a bit funny when you first drag the clip onto it, don't worry too much. That's normal. Um, there's a lot you can do to fix it up. So we're just going to go back to our composite view here. Um, at the moment, I'm pretty happy with that key. Okay, now before I go any further, there's just one little thing I want to point out uh, to you guys is that I shot this at a shutter speed of 1 50th, basically at, at 24 frames a second. That's essentially the 180 degree shutter rule, which is all good, um, except I think I really should have increased the shutter speed a little bit more because as you can see here, with a bit of motion, it gets a bit blurry and the keying can become a bit of a nightmare if you've got blur. You really want crisp edges around your subject as often as possible. Sometimes it can be hard to avoid, but just remember, if you're gonna shoot green screen and you've got a little bit of fast action or fast hand movement, increase the shutter speed a little bit so it's just gonna uh, capture that motion without being blurry. Having said that, I still think we can get a pretty good key out of that bit of motion there. So the next step would be to just pop one layer on top of the other one. Okay, make sure they're the same length. I'm just going to zoom in a bit, Command Plus. Now, as you can see, they're both on top of each other, so I'm going to need to just grab this one where you can see the back of me there and just go to position and move the X axis to the right. We just want him across here a little bit so we can kind of separate them. Click on the layer underneath where you can see this guy's face. We're going to, again, position it to the left a little bit, okay. And obviously now the thing we need to do is match up the timing. So when I reach up and take the glasses off, it, it uh, looks like a mirror reflection. So it's important also when you're shooting that to make sure that you get the timing right. Um, if one arm is a little slower than the other, it's gonna show, it's not gonna look right. So make sure your movements are exact, like mirror exact. It's not too hard, but you might have to try a few times. Okay, so here we go. We're just going to try and I'm going to make an attempt at uh, aligning these so that the timing is perfect. So as you can see, it's a little bit off. Um, well, it's actually, it's pretty good. It's a little bit off though. I think the one possibly, I'm thinking this guy here where you can see my face, probably just going to... Um, slide it back a little bit so that the timing is a bit more accurate. Let's try that. See, that's looking a lot better already. The hand position isn't quite right. I might even just go back a little bit the way I came. See if that makes a difference. It's pretty good. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is bring in some kind of background. See, these guys aren't on some plain, boring, uh, you know, background with no color at all. I'm gonna find one I actually used from one of my films, Velvet Boulevard. I'm just cheekily, you know, gonna throw this in so I don't have to make a whole new one. Uh, it's gonna work okay. Um, I think it's basically, I'll just bring it a little closer by scaling it up a bit. Okay, there is good. I'm just gonna move that across. Uh, make sure that the guy who's a reflection here, you can see my face, that's going to be the reflection. I might just have to bring that across a little bit. Now, one of the next things you should do with that is make it opaque. I'm going to go down to about 20%. Just see what works for you. There's no perfect number for it because of course, when you look at your reflection in glass, it's not going to be 100%. Um, it's going to be a little bit see-through. So. I think that looks pretty good there. With this layer of the back of me just here, I'm probably going to um, enlarge that a little bit. I'm going to scale, I'm going to try 110% just because he'll look a little closer this way. Um, I might even go 115 just so I look a lot closer than that and it, it sort of looks right. Yeah? Position your, um, your two layers here so that it actually looks like you're looking at yourself in a reflection. Uh, equally with this layer 
uh, where you can see my face, I'm probably just gonna scale that down a little bit, like 95%, it's pretty good. Um, and I'm just gonna grab both of those layers and move them down a little bit. Just to about there, that's good. Again, I might just move the reflection of me just a little bit more to the left. Okay, that's pretty cool there. I don't know if my eyes are in the right spot, but it, it's, it will work. One of the next things I wanna do is put a bit more into the background. So I shot some uh, cityscape. This is uh, Brisbane city here at night. I'm just gonna pop that layer down the bottom underneath everything else and pull the sound out of it. And uh, we're gonna make, we're gonna change the duration to four seconds on that as well. So what that'll do is give us something out that window, a bit of a city to look at with some motion, some real cars driving around and that sort of thing. Just be careful of this sort of thing here. It looks a bit funny with the lights underneath the face there. So just try repositioning that layer a little bit. Perhaps uh, scaling it up a bit, that might work too. And we'll see how that looks. Yeah, so just scrub through, make sure it works. Looks pretty good, I don't mind that. Um, I, I'd like this background here, this wall and curtain to be a little bit more, I'm not sure if I like the yellowy sort of color. I'm, I'm gonna go for more of a, um, I might be able to just cheat a little bit here and throw a bit of a, Let's go with the cold steel effect, just to give it a bit of blue. That looks pretty good. Just gonna jump in the color board and maybe pull out the saturation a little bit as well. So about negative 32, that's good. Cool, that's looking good. Now, what's one of the other things we can do with the reflection? Well, sometimes when we look into the mirror, it's not always perfectly clean and clear. Uh, often it's a little bit blurry. So what are, what are we gonna do now is jump into blur. I might try, there's a number of different blurs. See which one works for you. I like the Gaussian blur. So we're gonna throw that on top of that layer there of me so it looks a little blurry. Now by default, it's gonna be far too blurry. So let's just take that from 50% down to say 10%. It looks pretty good. Might even, might even like try 8%, a little clearer. Five, there. So it's a little blurry, it's opaque, it look, it's starting to look more like a mirror reflection. If you're really keen to um, play with that a, a little bit more, one thing you can do is with your distort panel here and your inspector is uh, basically you can, you can grab onto any sort of anchor point and drag it around just for a little bit more of a distortion type effect. Uh, you know, play with that, see what you like. For the moment, I'm, I'm, not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna play with that too much, I'm just gonna leave it almost as the way it was. We're just gonna go with that. Now, the other thing we haven't really done yet with these layers is color grade them a little bit. I'm thinking this one here of the back of me probably needs, we need to just jump into our color board here and probably go to, I'm thinking possibly darkening it a little bit as well. So, not too much. And I think just general, like the whole negative three, you know? And so we should probably do that for this guy here as well. And I might just bump up the highlights a little bit, just so you can, it's a little clearer, you know, a little easier to see and it separates from the background a little bit better. There we go. That's looking pretty good. I'd also probably add a vignette to this and some letterbox bars just to give it a cinematic look. But so far that's pretty good. I might even just, when, when we're on the color grading thing, jump onto that cityscape out there. I might just pop the highlights right up on that too because yeah, it'll just really show that cityscape a lot more. It's looking a lot better. Again, if it's off in the distance, you want it to be a bit out of focus because that's the way lenses work naturally. So uh, probably not that much out of focus. Again, come down to about, I don't know, just try different things, see what works. 15, maybe even maybe even 10. Okay, looks pretty good. I, 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 I like it. So let's just play this back and see what it looks like. That's pretty good. I don't mind, let's check that again. Yeah, it's not too bad. There's a few things that could be improved, but again, it's, it's just basic. I threw it together in just a few minutes. Um, be sure to have a bit of a zoom in and just move around and make sure that 
everything is is keyed nicely as well there's no this is the good this is actually the reason i'm wearing a hat is it's much easier to key when you're not dealing with crazy hair and stuff like that you can the key just uh cuts that out really nicely so i'm actually pretty happy with that so far um, and there it is there you basically have it that is the basics of chroma keying and final cut pro using the mirror technique that i like to use so often in my films now you know how to do it and you can use it in your films too all you need is some lights a camera a little bit of green screen you can buy cheaply on ebay throw it up onto the wall um, and away you go it looks really effective there's a it, there's no limit to how it can be used and it looks fantastic and there we have it guys here's one i prepared earlier using exactly the same footage just add some add some lights add a bit of color try some different things see what works uh, play around with it but that's basically it. That's the what I call the mirror technique in Final Cut Pro.